there's a possibility you're doing the wrong kind of exercise when it comes down to insulin resistance. Now, it's not about you doing anything wrong. Exercise itself is hugely beneficial, okay? Exercise by and large has been demonstrated in multiple studies to increase pancreatic beta cell mass. So it helps the pancreas produce more insulin and helps it do so more effectively. So don't stop your exercise regime, but you might be spending too much time. Okay, now this is a good thing. There's some relatively newer research that's demonstrating that you don't need to be working out for long. In fact, the relatively recent study I'm talking about suggested that about 40 minutes per week is sufficient. That's like seven minutes per day or something like that. But you have to be doing a specific kind of exercise. So I'm gonna talk about how you have to balance something on your nose while tapping a box with your right hand and dancing delicately on your left. Okay, not that kind of specific exercise, but I'm gonna talk about what you can do strategically and how you can get the best impact. Let's jump in. After today's video, I popped the link down below for House of Macadamias. If you like macadamia nuts, then this is the place to be, okay? Also, the monounsaturated fats in macadamia nuts have been demonstrated across multiple studies to be very good for insulin resistance. So it's also quite relevant for this subject matter. So that link down below will save you 20% off your entire order through House of Macadamias, whether you're wanting to get macadamia nuts, whether you wanna try their macadamia nut bars, where the first ingredient is literally macadamia nuts and there's no sugar in them. Oh, and I almost forgot a free 20 ounce bottle of fresh cold pressed macadamia nut oil. We're talking nice omega-7, low omega-6, higher omega-3 macadamia nut oil. Free, literally free, as long as you're using that link down below and using that 20% off discount link to buy something else through House of Macadamia. Okay, or if you wanna try their sugar-free, chocolate-covered or white chocolate-covered, those are insanely good, macadamia nuts. So that link is down below this video. Okay, so this study took a look at subjects that were doing 40 minutes of intense, like high-intensity training per week compared to subjects that were doing 150 minutes per week of a more aerobic style workout. I am not about to say that aerobic training is bad, but what we did find is that the high intensity training group ended up having better improvements in GLUT4 translocation, a number of other things that I'll explain in more detail. The bottom line is that after 12 weeks, when it came down to looking at basic glucose levels, 40 minutes of high intensity training compared to 150 minutes of aerobic training yielded about the same result. They both had about the same improvement. So maybe we've been spending way too much time in the gym when we could literally be doing 40 minutes a week of higher intensity work, which I'll explain what that looks like in just a minute. Before I get into what you should do realistically, we also have to acknowledge that aerobic training is going to increase the fat oxidation. Okay, so we don't wanna just ignore that altogether. Doing aerobic training is going to help increase the ability to utilize fats through beta oxidation, which is gonna decrease the amount of fats that are inside your intramyocellular lipids, inside your muscle, which is gonna improve insulin resistance. That's a different discussion for a different day. What they found is that just one session of this high intensity training of like seven to 10 minutes decreased postprandial glucose levels for 24 hours, meaning it decreased the glucose spike after food for 24 hours. So it had this long lasting effect when high intensity work was done. Additionally, there was a 369% improvement or increase in GLUT4 translocation. GLUT4 is the receptor that comes out to the surface of a cell to bring glucose in. If GLUT4 never came to the surface of a cell, you'd never have a net that is casted into the bloodstream to pull glucose in. 369% improvement in the high intensity group. Does this mean that high intensity is better than aerobic? No, because they're, they're really two different worlds altogether. But what it does mean is that maybe you're not making the best use of your time if your goal is simply to improve your lifestyle, improve insulin resistance, and sort of restore metabolic function. So what does this exercise look like? It's very important to note that high intensity training doesn't need to be seven or 10 all out minutes, okay? You can do it in an interval fashion where you surge and then take a break. But one of the things that we have to acknowledge is that the reason that high intensity training works or high intensity interval training works so much is because it's highly anaerobic, okay? When it's anaerobic, you are using carbs as a fuel source 
and therefore you're taking carbs out of the bloodstream and you're conditioning the cells to use those carbs very, very, very well. So this is a super important thing that we need to be paying attention to. There's also what is called the insulin independent glucose uptake. When you're moving in an intense fashion, that insulin independent glucose uptake means that you suck up glucose into the cell without insulin being needed. This gives your pancreas a break because it doesn't have to produce insulin and it allows for the cells to suck up the glucose and still get the benefit. So what can this look like? Well, most people are gonna set out to do interval training and they'll do like maybe one minute of intense exercise and a one minute break. One minute on, one minute off. What's important to note is that the time of your workout is the time that you are at the interval stage, not at the rest stage, okay? So if it's a seven minute workout, it might in theory be more like a 14 minute workout because you have seven minutes of work, seven minutes of rest, right? Now, you can shorten the rest however you need or lengthen the rest however you need. What is the most important thing is that you are preserving the integrity of your interval. So if your rest period between whatever interval you're doing, whether you're sprinting or biking or whatever, if your rest period is too short and you're not adequately recovered to move into your next interval, you're not going to be able to give it your all. And if you don't give it your all, you arguably don't get the same benefit on the pancreatic beta cells that we're talking about here. So what I would recommend to you is rest however long you need in order to preserve maximum intensity for when you do have your interval, okay? So 60 second interval, maybe you need two minutes rest, that's fine. But the only thing you're counting towards your workout is the actual interval itself because that is what's going to impact. So if you look at it over the course of a week, you wanna end up at 40 minutes of maximal total work. Even if that means it's 80 minutes total actual workout time. And this will make a dramatic improvement in a number of different things in your life. But when it comes down to glycemic control and insulin resistance, the research is starting to look pretty darn promising and it's not too bad for the time either, right? I wouldn't wanna work out for 150 minutes if I don't have to. I'll see you tomorrow.